I find one of the best things is putting a nice dirty hard cover on a book, but that requires the use of binders board or a book board. Now, book board can be a lot of fun to work with, but it can also be quite challenging, especially if you don't have the big equipment to cut it down appropriately. I'd like to show you some tricks for cutting down your boards to make sure they're square and they're the right size. Now, not all binders boards are the same. They can be softer or harder, they can be made of different materials, and of course they can be different prices. Here's a few samples that I have here in my shop that I use on a regular basis. This is a nice ESCA board. It's 0.059, which is the gauge of the thickness. So it's fairly thin and it's fairly soft. So it's nice and easy to use for hand cutting. Now book board or Davy board is a little bit stronger, a uh, little bit stiffer. Um, this one is a little bit thicker as well. This is a 0.070 board. So a little sturdier, but not too thick. You can also get this green board. So mill board is often used, especially in fine bindings or high-end work. It's much more expensive, but it's very stiff and it's great to work with because it doesn't warp a whole lot. Most of you probably will have access to a binders board, um, although some suppliers offer the ESCA board as well. So let me show you some techniques for cutting. Now, I buy binders boards in full sheets. Some suppliers offer them in half sheets as well. The first thing I do is I mark the grain direction. So you can bend the board and then bend an equal amount in the other direction. Um, and that may be able to tell you exactly what the grain is. Sometimes I'll take the board and I'll hang it off the end of the bench and do so in the other direction. Again, with the same amount and see which one drapes more. But generally, the binder's board is gonna run grain long. So the grain running the long direction. I always start by marking pencil lines along the entire thing. That way I don't have to worry about it and I don't have to think about it later on. I can just grab it and I'll know which way the grain's going. So the first thing I want to do is I want to square this up. Now when I'm cutting binders board, I always want to make sure that I have a nice sturdy ruler, a metal ruler that I can use, um, or a carpenter square, which is gonna help us in a few minutes. So let me go ahead and gather my tools and we'll get started. So I have a nice metal aluminum ruler here and I'm gonna use this to cut against. It's gonna keep me from gouging out or causing um, weird shapes in my ruler. Um, I'm also gonna be using a utility knife. So this is one of the snap-off utility knives. So where it comes out, but you can use any kind of utility knife or cutting knife that you want. Um, you can always use an X-Acto or a scalpel or something, but it's gonna um, dull it pretty quick. The binder's board's pretty solid. So it's gonna be a little extra work. The other thing I make sure I do is I get a new blade. Now this one just clips off at the end. So I can just take the end. It's got a little applicator here to help pull that off. I look away when I do that or put on safety glasses. Okay, so now I have a new sharp blade. A new sharp blade is gonna be important because it's gonna save you uh, frustration, wear and tear. Now the first thing I do is I try to get a nice square cut. So I'm trying to make a, a nice right angle when I get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is get my first straight edge. So when I'm cutting board, I wanna make sure that I keep my ruler in place. Now, sometimes you can do that by hand, but I often find that finding weights to help hold your ruler is gonna be handy, especially for these long cuts. So I'll use as many of these as I can. Now these are just bricks that have been wrapped in cloth, uh, and I keep them around as handy weights in the shop. I'm gonna go ahead and line up my ruler exactly where I want it to be. I keep my ruler. Now you want to make sure that you're above the, um, the board enough to kind of get a reach. So working at a lower table may be easier for you. When I cut, I try to make sure that I um, maintain kind of a nice plumb line or a nice um, kind of straight cut. So I'm going to make sure that the blade is vertical as I'm cutting through and I'm just going to work through the binder's board.
Now I know I'm cutting a lot. Unfortunately, that's just the name of the game when you're hand cutting binders board. There we go. So I have a nice straight cut. Make sure it's all there. So I make sure I remove that end piece, make sure that cuts nice before I move my ruler. And make sure there's no issues I need to know about. Go ahead and move my weights over. I'm sure I'll use them again. And then let me get ready to cut the other direction. So off camera, I went ahead and I cut down some of that extra board to get it out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. This is the cut that I made that you saw. So there's a couple of ways of getting a nice square cut. Now the first one, I can use the mat, um, the grid on my cutting mat. So the grid on this cutting mat is gonna give me a nice 90 degree angle. I'm gonna line one edge of the board up against a horizontal line. And then I'm gonna use one of the vertical lines to line up my ruler. One, two, three, get it nice. I always try to make sure I stay on the same side of the line to get as close to square as I can. Go ahead and line my ruler up with that marked line as well. I'm gonna go ahead and put my weights back on there. Double check everything's good and then Move that back just a little so my hand has some place to go. Okay, so that second piece is off. Now, if everything went okay, I should have nice square corners here that are nice 90 degree angles. Um, I can then measure out and cut an additional piece to the width that I want. Um, when I'm hand cutting, often I'll go ahead and I'll cut it oversize and then do a little trimming as I get closer. It seems like a lot more cutting, but it gets you a little more accurate in the end. So using your cutting mat is a great option, but I have a few other options. What I like to think of as a step up from just using my cutting mat is to use a carpenter square. So try and get one that's as nice and square as you can, kind of the highest quality you can. But this allows you to get that nice 90 degree angle. I can take this and I can line it up to the outside of the board or I can line the edges to the board. And that gets me that nice straight angle. Again, just like with the ruler, you can use some weights to hold everything in place. and steady and a lot of pressure on that ruler really is going to make your life easier. So now I've gone ahead and I've trimmed down this piece and I'm pretty sure that these corners are going to be nice and square as well. Now once I get smaller when I'm getting ready to make it for the actual book I have a couple of jigs I'd like to show you that I use when hand cutting board. Now one of the jigs I like to use for cutting both paper and board is this corner jig. This is something I learned about from Haiti Kyle when I was studying with her in Philadelphia. We have a wooden board that has L-shaped brackets on two sides. We've made sure that the brackets were nice and square. A cutting mat just fits in there quite nicely. And now it's easy for me to use one of these edges to start a cut. I can use a triangle or I can use a larger or smaller carpenter square. So I'm just gonna line that up press it down, and then just do my cuts. So it helps support things, and make sure that we have that nice 90 degree angle. And having a good triangle is really helpful. So that just gets me a little more accurate than I was able to before. So this isn't too hard to make. I have a friend who made these for me and um, uh, I use them all the time when I'm doing hand cutting. So it's a great option to have in the shop um, and works really well. I have another option to show you as well.
So here's another jig that I find useful. This is a bench hook. If any of you are printmakers, you might recognize these as something to work on linoleum blocks or do carving. So we have a panel with a stop at the bottom and then a stop at the top. And so that just hooks on the end of your bench and again allows you to have that nice straight edge to use with a triangle or a carpenter square. If my board was too long, I might use a ruler to help give me that length. Or actually, I found it's a little easier to use a large triangle. So I have a large one that I use for boxes and for cutting board. Like the jig before, it just makes it much easier to hold on to and to do those complicated cuts. I can feel my knife is getting a little bit dull, so it's getting harder to cut. So it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and replace that blade. We'll see if I can get this cut done first. There it is. So using a bench hook like this, using the cutting board like I showed you, using your cutting mat with, a, with the lined edges, or using a carpenter square. So we have lots of great options before we move on to the heavy guns. Now, what I have in my shop and I like to use, but it requires a lot of space, a fair amount of expense to get one, is some sort of a, a cutter. So this is a board shear. It's a Jacques board shear that I use for cutting most of my board. It's basically a pretty large paper cutter. It's got a nice clamp to hold things as well. And it's a, a good option, but again, it takes up a lot of space and it's, they're fairly expensive. So when you get to that point, it's nice and easy and cuts through those boards with no trouble at all. If you want to find out more information about Haiti Kyle's folding jig, you should look it up in her book, The Art of the Fold. Now, I'm not the first person to use a bench hook system like this. It's been used in printmaking for many years. You can find a nice example by Peter Verhan on the Book Arts web. And Darren of DAS Bookbinding uses a similar system and actually has a video that shows how to construct one. I'd like to thank Brandon of Ex Materia Woodworking. You can find him on YouTube. He was nice enough to construct these for me. I'm far better at paper and board than I am at wood. So I hope this has given you a few extra options for cutting that bookbinder's board, making those clean, nice lines, and getting them square. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.